Hello, I am Ray Salisbury, a photography tutor in New Zealand. I will show you how to selectively sharpen your landscape images within Photoshop. Let's go! Firstly, let's open up a suitable image. File, Open. Here's a snapshot I took a few years back in Mount Richmond Forest Park. My tramping colleague is also a keen shutterbug. I've placed him on the rule of thirds. I have done all the fundamental stuff and all that's left is a touch of sharpening. All photos from digital cameras need a bit of this to varying degrees, especially if the images are to be printed. It's really important that you do all post-processing first. Fundamental stuff such as colour correcting, fixing the exposure, cloning, etc, etc. Sharpening is best left to last, as it's a destructive process. Now, the most common filter used for sharpening is somewhat of a misnomer. It's called unsharp mask. We go filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Here, there are three parameters. Amount, radius, and threshold. You only need change the amount slider from about 50% up to about 200% maximum, depending on what sort of scene you have shot. Leave the radius slider on the default of 1, and generally you don't touch the threshold. To show you how sharpening works, I am going to take the amount slider from nothing right up to boost it up to about 200%. And you can see Photoshop is now sharpening around the edge of my friend here. And if we push the amount slider way too far to the right, you can see how ugly sharpening can be. So it's very important you don't overdo this. See how the edge pixels have their contrast boosted? Look at the blue sky. If you push the parameters too much, horrible digital artifacts are added. This is especially noticeable on areas of empty sky that are devoid of any other texture. So be warned. Oversharpening is ugly and cannot be reversed. So how do we solve this problem? In cases such as this, we need to sharpen the foreground up to the horizon, but leave the sky untouched, or better, remove any digital noise from it. To do this, we need the sky and land on separate layers. Here's how we do this. Firstly, we need to duplicate the layer. Right click on the background layer here and hit on layer from background. We'll name it sky. Secondly, right click the new layer. From the pop-up menu, select duplicate layer. We'll name this foreground. Drag the foreground layer to the bottom below the sky layer. Next, we need to select either the land or the sky. Obviously, selecting the blue sky is going to be much easier. Now, the best tool for the job is the amazing quick selection tool. The keyboard shortcut is W, and it's the fourth tool down on the toolbar. Now, we can go to the brush menu up here and select quite a large brush size, at least say 400. Click and drag the cursor over the areas of sky in one continuous movement. Follow the horizon. All right, that's done an OK job, but if I zoom in with a magnifying glass, I can see areas where our brush was perhaps a little bit too big. We could get a smaller brush size there. And if we hit the Alt key, we can just make sure that that rock isn't selected. We just need to do some fine adjustments here with the selection. The quick selection tool is pretty good, but it's missed this entire rock here. So I'll just select that. And it's missed this mid-ground area here. And that's pretty good. Now we've selected the sky, we'll need to soften the selection a bit. Go to Select. Refine Edge. At the top, 
there's a useful view menu but you can mask the foreground or whatever you want I prefer view on black so I can see what regions of my image will be masked the main parameter we need to adjust is edge detection in Creative Cloud we now have the option of Smart Radius where the computer does the work for you for users of older software we'll do this manually in this particular case the horizon is clearly defined so I'll enter a low value of uh, 5 pixels here in Creative Cloud we can also output to a layer mask but I'll do this the slow way click OK now we should have the sky layer selected and at the bottom of the layers palette we can click on add layer mask when we hide the layer visibility for the foreground we can see that the sky layer we can see that the sky layer only shows the sky underneath this is the foreground layer which we can sharpen separately now it's time to sharpen the foreground we go to filter sharpen unsharp mask we only need to change the amount slider we can enter a value from 50% all the way up to 200% um, I'm going to zoom in to 100% like so and play around you need to toggle the preview checkbox so you can see what you're doing about 120% is quite good for this looking at the foreground rocks need a lot of sharpening toggle the preview checkbox off on yep that's good because we're not sharpening the sky here we can push the parameter a bit further by the way you should always check your images for sharpness at 100% see down the bottom left here 100% especially if you're making prints okay I'm pretty happy with that you go okay the sharpening is done now the foreground is sharpened without affecting the sky area the last thing we want to do is check the sky layer up here click on the sky layer I noticed a couple of sensor spots over here before I'll quickly deal to them using the spot healing brush the spot healing brush tool is here there it is voila done there it is now if the sky is noisy we can clean it up using the reduce noise filter I'll just zoom into 200% yeah there's a lot of digital noise in the sky so we can clean this up using the reduce noise filter we go filter noise reduce noise the main thing you need to do is adjust the strength slider it all depends on the amount of noise in the sky I'm going to key in a full value of 10 I'm going to reduce the detail slider down and the sharpen details right to nothing and we have a preview here we can look over and see the main photo and see that we've reduced a lot of that noise if we uncheck the preview yeah that was pretty noisy so I'm going to go OK So there we have it, we have a really nice sharp foreground with no obvious digital noise in the sky as a result. Finally, we need to flatten the image. You'll find this at the top right of the layers palette. All we have left to do is save as and we're done. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I'm back one last thing don't worry about all the technical terminology in the videos just download my free step-by-step -step PDF checklist and if you really dig my videos please subscribe I'd appreciate it time to get out of here